Welcome to this video on pH calculations. This time we're examining the assumptions behind weak acid pH calculations. So a reminder about weak acid pKa calc uh, pH calculations. Uh, this relationship here between H plus and pH is absolutely fine. Um, and this is just the definition of Ka, so no approximations there. But in order to move forward, we've seen in a previous video that we're going to make a couple of assumptions. We make an assumption here and a second assumption there. And that allows us to arrive at a, an approximate Ka formula, uh, which is much, much easier to rearrange and solve for the H plus concentration. But are these assumptions valid? So we're going to look at each in turn and see if that's the case and when they're likely to break down. So the basis of the first assumption, which is that the H plus concentration is the same as the A minus concentration. And that really just comes from the fact that uh, one HA molecule dissociates to form one H3O plus ion or one H plus ion and 1 OH minus or what sorry 1 A minus uh, it's you can see it in these the mole ratio in this dissociation equation every time one of these breaks up you get one of those and one of those just like a pen with a lid you take the lid off from every one pen you get one lid and one um, pen now why is this only an approximation then it all just seems so reasonable well the reason is that you, are, you can also get H plus ions coming from water. So H plus ions also form by autoprotolysis of water. So we had the typical expression, two H2Os form an H3O plus ion and an OH minus ion. But crucial thing here, no A minus produced. And so that is going to lead us to a bit of an imbalance. We've got here a bit too much. So in actual fact, concentration of A plus, H plus will be slightly bigger than the concentration of A minus in reality. Now, water dissociation, uh, you can work out um, that the concentration of a, uh, H3O plus from water is around about 10, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed. So water is dissociating to give us around about 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed of H plus ions at 25 degrees C. So this situation uh, which situations will this be a bad approximation? It's when the concentration of H plus from the acid is very low, comparable to 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed, perhaps a one order of magnitude bigger, one times 10 to the minus six or something like that. So what situations uh, is that going to be a big deal in? Well, it's going to be situations where you have a very weak acid. Or it's going to be situations where you have a very dilute solution. So a very weak acid with a very low Ka or a very dilute solution with a very low HA initial concentration. Remember from this formula here that the H plus concentration is equal to the square root of Ka times the initial acid concentration. So whenever these values are low, you're going to end up with a low value of the H plus concentration. And once you start to get down towards this limit of about 1 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed, then this imbalance is going to really be felt. So that's assumption number one. Assumption number two is that the equilibrium 
uh, concentration of the undissociated acid is the same as its initial concentration. Now the basis for this assumption is that weak acids dissociate very little. So the fraction dissociated uh, is very, very small. Um, so the typical weak acids like carboxylic acids at a one mole per decimeter cube solution, it's about two out of every, no, one out of every 200 molecules. So it's very, very, very low. Um, and therefore the HA equilibrium concentration, which is the initial concentration uh, minus the concentration of H plus ions uh, is approximately equal to just the initial concentration as the concentration of H plus is small. Now I think for this one it's easier to see why that's only an approximation because some HA do dissociate. Um, and as a result of that um, you actually would expect that the HA equilibrium concentration should actually be less than the initial concentration. If none of it dissociated at all, then we wouldn't have any extra H plus ions and every weak acid would have a pH of 7. So it's, it's got to be wrong. So what situations uh, is it going to be a bad approximation then? Well, it's going to be any sort of situation where we have um, where appreciable dissociation takes place. where that difference between these two is felt. Um, and so if we have a fairly strong weak acid with a large Ka, or if we have, again, a dilute solution, because the more water you've got around, um, the, the more the fraction, and sorry, but it's not necessarily because the water concentration has gone up, but actually you do get more dissociation uh, percentage-wise with the more dilute uh, solution. So both those cases, um, but mainly uh, this one here where you've got a fairly strong uh, weak acid is the one to be aware of. So how much difference does that second assumption actually make? So what I've plotted on this graph here um, is pKa value of an acid um, against the error in the pH. So this is the approximate pH minus the exact pH. So we find out that if we do that, that the uh, pH is always too low. So the approximate value is always giving you a pH that's too small. Um, and the error is larger if you have a stronger and stronger weak acid. So over here, we've got stronger weak acids with a lower pKa. Or if you want to think about it in terms of Ka, this would be a higher Ka. Uh, whereas over here, you've got the, the weaker weak acid. So over here at the very weak end of things, as you'd expect, very little dissociation here, there's no error. But when you get over to the stronger weak acids, you're starting to get a bit of a problem. The approximate pH is too small. Notice also with these graphs that the more concentrated the solution is, so this is higher initial acid concentrations uh, or Let's say increasing, sorry, increasing, this is increasing initial acid concentration. You're going to get leads to lower error. And that's because just the percentage that dissociate is going to be bigger if you have um, HA0 being a very, very low value. Um, so, um, where does this actually lead us? Well, typical concentrations of acid that you would make up a weak acid, one mole per decimeter cubed here would be very concentrated. So probably you're looking between these two lines and the, the errors are not very big. I mean, this is 0.1 pH units. 
there this is 0.02 pH units but probably you're thinking here um, around about a, a cutoff here of about um, four let's, let's just stick it in red at that point there you're thinking uh, actually my difference there is really not very big even at the lower concentration it's pretty small uh, so a pK of four um, you're pretty happy and that's quite fortunate because things like carboxylic acids tend to arise in this sort of area here um, and so basically anything above here will be really fine for for assumption two um, so these acids here um, you've got problems uh, these are too strong for that assumption uh, to work but remember assumption one is always going to be worse if you have a weaker and weaker acid and it turns out that once you get to around about pH 10 um, the concentration of H plus from the dissociation of the acid is so low that actually it becomes similar to the concentration of H plus arising from the water uh, so this is about the sort of sweet spot these guys are too weak for assumption one Uh, and these guys here are too strong for assumption number two so these are the kind of range of pKa values that work well so approximations to pH is good for pKa around about four to ten so we're th talking there Ka values around about 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 4.